But many people believe that the Meiji Restoration was a time of great change that opened up Japan to modernization, unification, and new technology. The Meiji Restoration was also a time of poverty, anger, violence, and merry villains at the Satsuma Rebellion, which all stemmed from the satisfied samurai towards the new imperial government in the Meiji Restoration. The abolishment of samurai happened during the late Tokugawa period to the beginning of the Meiji Restoration that started in 1868 when Emperor Meiji became enthroned. Around the 1870s, he started abolishing the samurai's rights because he wanted to establish a western-style national army. Wanting to implement more western-style ideals and change the legislation wasn't the only reason for the samurai class to become obsolete. It was also the fact that the samurai class became an economic drain in Japan's economy. During the early Meiji period, the government issued edicts that started in the 1870s. These edicts were meant to strip the samurai of their identities as samurai. One edict called the Hattori Edict banned the wearing of samurai sword sets called Daisho in public. For many samurai, this was very devastating, and it's said that once the sword set disappeared, the soul of the samurai disappeared along with it. Following this edict were many more edicts. Another edict prohibited the traditional samurai top knot hairstyle to encourage samurais to wear western hairstyles. So what do you do next once you completely take away a samurai's soul? Well, next you take away his income, because if he has no soul, then why does he need money, am I right? Another reason for the samurai's anger was the abolishment of hereditary stipends that were provided by feudal lords. Hereditary stipends were the samurai's paycheck, and once their paycheck was taken away from them, many samurai found themselves without a stable source of income. One of the main ways the government expelled hereditary stipends was by implementing government bonds to buy out the samurai from their status. These national bonds were from the Meiji government to give a source of income to the samurai class. The majority of samurai received only 7% interest on national bonds, which is roughly 415 yen per person. And while you may be thinking, well at least you have enough money to survive, which is sadly not the case. The samurai's 7% interest earned them only 29.5 yen annually, which during that time was 0.5 less than the money needed for a person to support themselves. The only samurai that could live off interest alone were the top class samurai, because they were paid at a higher interest rate compared to the majority of samurai. Also, most of the samurai had to try and find other jobs or sell their hereditary pension bonds to make it through an emergency. In 1877, due to an inflation problem, the value of national bonds decreased, which ultimately sent the samurai into poverty. Now by this time, if you're a regular samurai during the Meiji Restoration, you'd be pretty pissed. They've broken your identity by getting rid of your fancy swords, your fabulous hairstyle, and then they just take your money so now you can't go to Starbucks all the time or splurge at Chipotle's. So what are you going to do? You're going to find a leader that's just as pissed as you and join a rebellion. Let's say the Satsuma Rebellion. And remember when I talked about inflation problem a couple slides ago? It was the Satsuma Rebellion that caused the Meiji government to raise military funds to suppress the rebellion. So the Meiji government printed large volumes of inconvertible notes, which led to this inflation. This meant that not only was joining the rebellion a bad idea, but an even worse idea if your income depended on the value of those national bonds. Looks like if you're a samurai, whether you fight or not, you can't ever win. The topic of the samurai class's struggles is central to understanding Japan, because it shows the negative side of what the Meiji Restoration did. This restoration wasn't all butterfly and rainbows, and many people, including the samurai, weren't on the bandwagon when Japan started to modernize itself. It is important to understand the negatives of the Meiji Restoration because it shows an important piece of Japan's relationship with the modern world, and you cannot understand the good side of history without understanding the flip side of history.